Hi, I'm your Gemini friend. This video is going to be about Chiron and Libra and Chiron in the seventh house. And I do have a video that goes more deeply into Chiron and what it represents in the description if you want to look at that. But whether you have Chiron in Libra or Chiron in the seventh house, I'm going to be going over what generally represents this energy of Libra in the seventh house and ultimately how this Chiron wound can serve you and create a much more purposeful sense of life. If you have Chiron in Libra, your Chiron is expressing itself more through the personality and embodiment of Libra energy. If Chiron is in your seventh house, this is going to be relevant in this area of your life represented by the seventh house that I'm going to get into more, but ultimately this is about relationships and who you are in relation to other people. There is a massive focus on relationship dynamics and mirroring and really learning to see who you are and really knowing yourself kind of through your relationships, through others. And just a brief explanation of Chiron. Chiron represents the wounded healer. This is a wound that we suffer from, a very difficult and vulnerable part of our life and our understanding of who we are and our overall role in society. Through experiencing this pain, we are meant to connect with other people who are experiencing similar pain and we can heal it within them. This is very much about connection, about healing, and everyone's journey is completely different and, you know, specific to them. So of course, how this plays out for you is going to have to do with the specifics of your chart and who you are in this lifetime. But when you have Chiron energy in Libra or the seventh house, this definitely speaks to the balance between autonomy, self-assertion, and individuality, and your connections, the people that are important to you in your life, or otherwise significant. And I do offer personal natal chart readings and synastry readings. If you're interested in that, I've got more information in the description too, but let's get into this. So whether I'm breaking down Libra or the seventh house, the theme overall of relationships, of the dynamics between people are going to be relevant. And this does speak to having a really natural sense of understanding the way that people work, the way that they connect to each other, the influence that we have on other people, and the overall importance of forming these connections and what we get out of it. But you can have a very strong sensitivity to this overall energy of harmony, the way that you're perceived by other people, the way you want to be perceived. And there's also a strong sense of justice and fairness and equality here. So I'm going to spend a second on specifically Libra and specifically 7th house stuff, but then I'm going to get more into just getting into the energy itself. And I'm going to say the word energy a million times. I always do. I don't know another way around it. Honestly, if you have suggestions for alternative words to energy, it's so vague, but it's just what comes out of my mouth. But okay. Libra. Libra as a sign represents that sense of harmony, Venus enjoyment and romance, charisma, beauty, that desire to create an environment that's nice for everybody. It can be indecisive. That's a trait typically associated with Libra because Libra is all about balance. It wants to look at both sides of something and it can see the merits of both sides. So sometimes it can be hard to reach that point of like, okay, but how do I feel? The opposite sign, Aries, can be really key here in trying to harness that direct, reactive, kind of self-focused, assertive energy. Finding that part of yourself and looking at where you have Aries in your chart can be important here. But with this focus on equality and balance and mediation, this is a wonderful sign for mediating, but it's not the best at standing up for itself or even really knowing exactly what it wants because there is so much focus on the other rather than the self and who we are in relation to them. The seventh house, this is the area of life that it's called, you know, the house of marriage, but it's so much more than that. It is truly about our interpersonal dynamics because this can deal with romantic partners. It can also be business partners. It's professional, 
and personal, committed relationships, contracts, legal issues, open enemies. This is the area of life where it shows how we deal with other people and who we are in relation to them. Okay, so this energy being expressed through Chiron actually shows an incredible amount of influence that you have over other people. And I don't want to get too much into even more esoteric things in the nature of reality here, but if you can consider the idea of everyone is you pushed out and understand just how much influence we can really have on the people around us just by our assumptions just by assuming that they're going to be a certain way when you have chiron especially in the seventh house but within this libra energy the influence that you have on these people can actually hurt or heal the entire situation just based off of your assumptions this shows a very magical ability when it comes to your relationships and how you see people. So the best that you can do to assume the absolute best of people, of course, while having discernment and not just blindly trusting people, but assuming the best from a place of personal power and knowing that you can handle anything, that is very ideal with this placement because then you're able to heal them purely by assuming that they are the best version of themselves because of this influence. I just want to get that out of the way before I go into the issues that can come up with this because it is so important to recognize your power. I mean, this house represents mirroring and projections and things that we can put on other people that are actually a part of us that either needs to be integrated, needs to be looked at, needs to be addressed in some way. Having Chiron here can actually attract people into your life that you might hate qualities about them. You might repeatedly attract people who have these traits that you are just not about at all. When you have repeated encounters with similar types of people, it's something to look at within yourself. Not saying that you're like them. It could be that the way that they are, say if you're encountering a lot of aggressive people, it could be telling you to look at yourself. Are you asserting yourself? Are you allowing these people to step all over you or assert themselves when you really deserve to be making your needs known too? It is so important to recognize the role that you play within any relationship that you have. You don't deserve to be mistreated, but sometimes we need to really find our power and create the best situation that we can out of it. Just remember that with this placement, people in relationships are going to be the biggest test for you. And this can work in weird ways because you can be drawn to people who have very similar talents to you or who have traits that you want to embody. And giving them the power to be that when you could be that, that can be another way that you're selling yourself short because this placement comes so much with selling yourself short and the complex issue of you know you know how to be a good polite person how to act within society how to act within a dynamic to please the other person equality is so important you need to focus on you being a factor in this and you being just as pleased as the other person but what can come with this is such a strong sense of knowing what other people need and knowing what they want and being able to sense what they're looking for within the interaction and then becoming that. And it can be so unconscious. This placement can have a sort of chameleon effect where you might be kind of a different person with different people. And that's not to say that you're two-faced or lying about who you are. This really happens very naturally. And it comes from the idea that who you are needs to be filtered through the lens of another person. And remember, you tell people who you are. You are the one who tells people exactly who you are. You tell them how to treat you. And sometimes that is without words or without actions. It's just energetic. If you feel bad about yourself, if you feel like somebody who is always mistreated, it's actually down to changing that belief and changing from how you feel like you should be acting into how you really want to behave. Oh, and what I was explaining with the specific issue, it's, it's that idea of being everything for someone, knowing exactly how to meet their needs, and expecting the same in return 
you know, if you're going to be a good person, you're going to be polite, you're going to be giving, you expect that from other people. It's just common courtesy, but it's not common. And this can come so much with attracting all the people who like don't naturally think that way. Takers, people who are going to see what you have to offer, take it and just drain you of it. And if you don't speak up and say, okay, well, I need this. If I'm going to do this for you, then I need this in return. That's only fair. That's the highest expression of Libra energy. When you are creating a relationship where both people are, are telling each other what they're bringing to the table and what they expect from it, you deserve that fairness. But it can be so hard to feel like you need to please people, like you need to be exactly what they want. This can be so ingrained and it can result in all sorts of things like conflict avoidance, feeling disappointed and let down by people all the time because they don't give as much as you would expect them to, but they won't know unless you tell them. In a perfect world, obviously everybody would be just as considerate, but this comes with extra consideration, more consideration than the average person and not enough consideration for yourself and for where you're coming from. A sense of comfort within yourself at all times comes from authenticity. It comes from knowing that no matter where you are, you can be yourself and you can just be free to express whatever it is that you want to. If you need something, you can say it. If you wanna say no to somebody, you can say no. But with this placement, it can feel like you can't. It can feel like it's not an option, like you're not valid enough. Like they play a heavier role in the relationship and you're just along for the ride. It can feel like people own you. It can feel very much like you're trapped within your connections because you have to be who they want you to be or who you feel that they should be. But you need to remember that in order to create an actual true connection, especially like romantically, you don't want someone to fall in love with somebody that you're not, especially if you're the sort of person to see all of their flaws and completely embrace them. Your flaws deserve to be seen too. Too, and they deserve to be loved. You deserve to be loved as the complete package, everything that you have to offer. But this doesn't always have to be romantic. It's in any relationship. Truly every single relationship that you have within your life is a chance to look at what you could be doing that isn't true to you and what you could be doing to improve it. Because once you realize the power that you have, which is really just kind of <laughs> not commandeering the relationship, it needs to be equal, it, you need that balance, but you are so naturally inclined to be over considerate that to stand up for yourself, that really lets the relationship play out in the way that it's naturally meant to. If somebody's not a match for you, if they're not going to respect your boundaries, if they're not going to accept who you really are, then they're not the right person for you. Or maybe that relationship is meant to play out in a specific way that can serve as a lesson for both of you. But when you're in your authentic energy and truly expressing what you really want to, this is where you create that healing and you can serve as such an incredible example for all the other people that have difficulty with confidence and asserting themselves and feeling like they are worth it. But really the sense of self here can be underdeveloped or it can be something that really completely plays off of the people around you. So think about who you are when you're alone, the interests that you have that you might keep private, those things that are very deeply personal. It can actually feel like this sense of maybe like guilt or shame when it comes to something that you're actually really passionate about, which is weird to describe, but say for example, if you're talking to somebody and then you get excited about something because it's a topic that you're really interested in and you talk about it and you get really fired up afterwards you could realize like oh my, did I say too much did I go too far did I embarrass myself it can feel like literally shameful to reach that point of passion and self-expression in a way that's very real and very you but it can feel like too much. So getting to the point where you don't feel like too much when you're just being yourself and surrounding yourself with people who don't make you feel like you're too much. It's really so much less personal than it needs to be. If you consider every single person in the entire world and the ways that we can match up with each other, of course we can see that like in our charts and in Sinistry, 
but just on a how you feel around someone sort of level, that should be a good starting place to to really imagine a person and their energy and how you feel when you're around them, how you feel after you've connected with them or conversations draining or do they feel like they're building you up. Really pay attention to how other people make you feel because that is just a signal for which people are going to be good for you at this point in your life. Relationships don't have to last forever, but this seventh house in Libra energy can be so romantic and so commitment focused that it can absolutely commit past the point where it needs to. This is a high risk of staying within a relationship past the point of it being good for you because there's, there's a really strong aversion to loneliness here. Um, it can feel like affirmation from other people, just attention in general, love and acceptance from them can feel very crucial. You could not like being alone at all. And that can boil down to not really feeling like yourself when you're alone because there is so much at play when you're with another person that can help inform you who you are. But to need other people to know who you are, this is not ultimately the healthiest way to go about it. Of course, we can learn all sorts of things from our dynamics, but you are the ultimate authority on who you are and on what's important to you. Because another thing that Venus, the ruler of Libra, deals with is value, things that are valuable to us, whether that's like material value, love, things that we enjoy. Venus is about sensuality and enjoyment and having a good time here. And everybody has things that they enjoy, but you are likely a person who can really appreciate those things because this comes with a lot of potential for like artistic skill, aesthetic, just good taste in general and creating a sense of harmony around you and around people and even just a feeling of harmony that can really strongly attract people to you. So it's really important not to be self-sacrificial, to only give as much as you need to, or want to, or desire to, and just like make sure that if you agree to something, you really wanna do it. But since Chiron has so much to do with healing, this can attract wounded people. You, your relationships can be very focused on healing anyway, and you could have a strong interest in various forms of healing people, but do make sure that if you are attracting wounded people, it's because you really want to help them and not because there is something within you that needs to be healed first. It is so important to give to yourself what you are seeking from other people. And this is just such a funny, kind of confusing energy where it's like, you have such a good sense of what is good for people and how to be good to them but you yourself can feel like you're not a good person or like you have to be good to people in order to deserve things. But whether we're looking at the dynamic of the seventh house and the first house, others in the self, or Libra and Aries. The first house in Aries, it deals with our identity, who we're showing up as and our most immediate responses to things. And those immediate reactions that we have to any given thing, that informs us as to how we really feel. So if you have more of a tendency to filter your reactions, to really think about things, overthink, over assess all sides of the equation, try focusing more on your gut reaction to stuff, on that immediate feeling that you get, whether it's about a person or about like whether you want to do something or not. Say you're invited to something and you want to say no, but you do it anyway. Consider why and consider what that is telling yourself. Like, okay, your body says, no, I don't feel like doing it. And your mind is like, okay, well, we're doing it anyway. How does that make your body feel? Do, do you want rest? Or do you want to socialize with draining people? What does it do for you? This is such a selfless placement that you need to consider what things are doing for you because your energy is so important because of that influence that you have around the people who are attracted to you and who you surround yourself with. You truly can learn so much about yourself by looking at the people around you and noticing patterns and seeing what it means to you, whether it is showing you a part of yourself that 
needs to be more clear, more bold, more upfront, or whether it's just informing you, this is a negative pattern. We have always attracted people like this because it reminds us of maybe a, an uncomfortable comfort in our childhood. Say, for example, having parents that fight all the time, showing you that this is what relationships are like and that is more comfortable than being in a nice loving relationship. Consider if you really do wanna fight or if you'd rather have peace, because you can bring peace with you. You are like a natural vessel for peace and for helping other people to assert themselves and recognize their special abilities, like recognize what is special about them, what they have to offer. You can really bring out the best in people, but you need to see the best in yourself first. You need to be that mirror showing people how to treat themselves. And this placement is wonderful for any form of mediation, any form of relationship analysis, say like a marriage counselor, anything dealing with like legal fairness, even more artistic, things that are creating more beauty in the world, more harmony. This is what you bring, but you need to be in your natural authentic state in order to really utilize that ability. And it really can be so powerful to take that over consideration, the, the focus on equality and thinking like, well, if I've given you this, then I do expect that in return, it's only fair. Stand up for yourself with that energy. Really assert the need for fairness in your relationships because this can really point to not having that. And it is up to you. I mean, considering accountability, these sorts of relationships that the seventh house deals with are ultimately about that accountability, about that like non-spoken, but it feels contractual sort of agreement to having a relationship, to creating something with somebody. It can feel like you are so obligated. So whether it comes to starting or finishing, Having integrity can be really, really important here. I know that with this energy and its desire to avoid conflict at all costs sometimes, it can be much easier to like ghost somebody or to avoid it all together, but addressing any conflicts that you have, that shows you your power, that shows you that you can do it, it shows you the control that you do have over your world and over your relationships. And the more that you focus on really building up that muscle of self-assertion, the stronger it gets and the more natural it becomes. And eventually you can reach the point where you don't feel like everything is an obligation, like you just have to do certain things because it's just what you do. You can come from a place of inner peace, confidence, and knowing that your intentions are good and who you are, there's nothing wrong with that. So if people don't match your energy well, they're probably just not the right people for you. And you're gonna get what you put out. So if you are putting out that you are this one particular sort of person that you're really not, but you feel like you should be, you are going to get more people who affirm that version of you, the fake version. And maybe that version is just too nice. You're like nicer than you really want to be. It's not too good to be true that you don't need to be nice to absolutely every person. You do not owe them that sweet pleasantry. It's it's not necessary. So much of it has to do with, you know, the way that we're raised, the way that we're taught. Maybe you were taught that you need to be polite at all costs and always listen to people or else. And you need to explore what that or else is. Like, what are the consequences really if I tell somebody that I don't want to go get lunch with them? The consequences are you did what you wanted. They learned that you're not just always going to be there for them doing exactly what they want. And like, everybody wins that way. It might not seem like the most sweet, polite way to do it, but it is ultimately more honest, more authentic, and like allowing people to fall into their own natural place. We can be holding people back from relationships that they're meant to have by clinging to them and being what we think they want. It's just so important to explore like who you are in relation to other people. And of course we can idealize people, relationships. We can completely dismiss another person's flaws while fixating on our own and trying desperately to hide them. But what good is that doing? 
If you are truly yourself with somebody and you allow them to see the parts that you don't think are acceptable and they accept them, that's the most incredible thing. And that's what you deserve. And that's what everyone deserves. We <laughs> deserve to know who we're talking to, what they're really like, what their intentions are, how their energy meshes with ours, how they make us feel, how we make them feel. And your ability for empathy and compassion is so incredibly deep, so strong, that it, it can need to be regulated within yourself first. But I promise who you really are is so much better than anything that you feel that you need to be. Any masks we put on or things that we hide behind, those aren't as good as the real you. And the people who are aligned with the real you are going to see that. So let them see you, let them find you, broadcast who you truly are so that you attract the right people. And in that way, you're able to be such an incredible healer, such a wonderfully peaceful, harmonious energy, helping other people feel their own sense of assertion and confidence, their sense of self, really exploring your first house, your own personal dynamic with the energy. Since we all have all of the signs in us somewhere, look at the house with Aries on the cusp of it. I, I, I am gonna make a video about interceptions at some point because interceptions are fascinating and I deal with that myself, but I think I've said what I want to. I think I've expressed it here. So I'm gonna stop it here. But if you have any questions, any, you know, tell me about your experiences. I'm just curious. I like to know how energy plays out in each individual's life because it's so unique. Everyone has all of the other things going on in their charts too. But this placement really speaks to the importance of who you are in relation to other people. It can just feel very difficult that we have to become ourselves before we are accepted but otherwise how would they know who we are so please know that you with all of your natural talents and abilities and interests are exactly the way that you're meant to be and it ultimately doesn't make sense to change for anybody because a relationship is it's both sides your side is just as important even if it can feel validating and good to be accepted it, it doesn't ultimately feel good it's cheating yourself out of that true acceptance. So thank you so much for watching. I really hope that this makes sense and I wish you harmony, peace in all of your relationships, especially with yourself. Thank you. I love you. Bye.